Hey guys, Shaber1000 here. Uh, on this episode of Late Night and Shop, <coughs> we're going to be checking this at Ooga Horn out. Also known as a Cla Claxton Horn. I don't know if this, you know, I don't know if it's a what brand it is or anything, but I do know it's made in New York, I believe, or New Jersey. We'll get into that. Um, I think we tested this once before and it didn't work so we're not going to restore tonight we're just going to see if we can get it working to see if it's worth restoring stick around grab a beer let's work on something okay guys so I know it's not Friday night, it's Saturday night, and I know I was supposed to do a live stream tonight um, of karaoke, but my niece was having problems with her truck all day yesterday, and I had to finish it up today, so I didn't get the garage ready, so I'm sorry about that. So we're going to try to shoot for next weekend. Again, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, and I'm sorry I didn't get a video out last night. I was just too damn tired. I worked on her truck till late after dark, and it was just, I was sore, and, you know, I'm not supposed to be doing that. I worked on it today, so, anyway, I'm sorry about that. So, it is... 1224 what is it Saturday the August 23rd so all right so now we've got our tester up here if we need it okay so what I'm gonna do I do have a full charged interstate battery down here I'm gonna set the battery up here and we'll check it first because I can't remember if we checked this or not I think we may have but as we go along, I'll tell you a little bit about these things. I'm not sure what year this is from. They put these on a, uh, like a lot of Model A Fords. And uh, this is a Model FM. Uh, Elaboratories. <laughs> EA Lab EA Lab EA Laboratories. Incorporated, Brooklyn, New York, USA. Like I said, we're just going to try to get this working. Um, I fixed one of these when I was younger, way younger, like a kid, for my dad to put on his wrecker. And uh, right here it says adjustment. <clears throat> Usually you just take one of these out. It looks like to me, like they may have these backwards, because usually the adjustment one usually it has the jam nut on it to keep it from turning so I think this one may be the one we have to take out I'm not sure it's been been together for a while but I can tell you right now that's not the original wiring and that's damn sure not the original plug there um, I believe this to be a 6 volt uh, and also this mount here these aren't these nuts are nylocks they're nylock nuts so they're they're not, you know, original to this. I think the mount might be. Um, I'm not positive. Like I said, I don't know anything about it. Uh, it's got some dings in it. But if we can get it working, we may try to straighten it out a little bit and restore it. But first, let's try to get it working. I thought we had tried this once and it didn't work. Um, I, I don't know if I filmed it. I can't remember, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure... <coughs> Excuse me, I'm pretty sure it doesn't work, so let's get this battery up here and we'll give it a quick test. All we got to do is uh, put the red wire onto the power, black wire on somewhere on the ground. We'll see if it tries to do anything. Okay, guys, so let's go ahead and give us a shot. A positive or negative. Like I said, I believe this to be a 12 volt or 6 volt. This is a 12 volt battery. For what we're going to do, it's not going to hurt it. What it is, is there's a little motor in here. And if I remember right, it's got like a like a metal diaphragm in here. 
and there's a cog like a gear inside there that rubs on that like on a nipple on that uh, on that diaphragm <laughs> nipple and diaphragm in the same sentence Wow okay so anyway and it vibrates and, and this like you know makes the uh, makes it louder kind of like amplifies it so let's touch this onto the battery here that's negative and here's positive nothing it's not even sparking just for shits and giggles let's see if it's a uh, positive ground okay no so let's take the back off of this you know what let's just scoot this over a little bit move you this way um, like I said, I thought that this was the one you took out to take this off of here, but I mean, hell, it might not even be the right screws. I don't know. Well, that's not even a jam nut. See, someone's. Yeah. All right. I don't know if I'll be able to fix this. I think someone's tried to rewind this. Look. Look, that's not... That's not... Uh, no. Um, when this spins... See, if you listen, you can hear... Okay. Well, this thing... I don't think it's going to be... Shit falling out of it. Look at that. Okay, so what we're going to do, see, this is the adjustment here. Very rusty, very rusty. So what we're going to do, see, this is falling apart, so I don't think we're going to be able to save this um, at all. And the way they, they wired this. What a shame. That sucks. Yeah, it's just uh just too far gone, I do believe. See someone's riveted. That's not that's not original. Someone just kinda screwed this up, didn't they? Alright, well, what we're going to do is I'm going to try to push that back, get a little screwdriver, and see what kind of tension these brushes have on them. Okay, let's go ahead and take one of the brushes out. Ugh. That's not good. Uh oh. Hmm. Well, it's not good at all. Yeah, someone's just wound that. That's not. That's not even. That's not even right, man. What a shame to take something like this. Don't know what the hell you're doing, and just uh, just really pretty much screw it up. You know. I don't even think these are the right brushes anyway. Someone's just, what a shame. What a doggone shame. Now, this may be the ground here. Do I dare try it? <laughs> Let's see. Can I do this without blowing something up? Hmm? Worked for a second, didn't it? Yeah. Work for a second. Okay, well, let's go. <laughs> Bruno's freaking out. Alright. Hmm, they just had this jammed in there. So, alright.
All right, let's just clean this off. I don't know what it's called, commutator. Is that what that is? I forget now. Same thing as a starter motor or electric motor or whatever. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of 3 one oil down in there. A little bit up in here. And we'll clean this off the best we can. Uh, I got some elect electric cleaner up there. We'll shoot it down. And we'll try it again. Okay. Now, I this little wire brush here. What I'm going to do is just going to spray that down. And all I'm doing is just putting the brush on there and turning that. Wish I could get them brushes out of there to clean them. That would help. All that took right off there, didn't it? This was negative, so I don't think it really matters on these. Um, okay. Let's shoot a little bit of. I'm using three and one oil because it's a little thicker. It's almost like a motor oil, but just let that get down in there. It's soaking it up, so now we'll do the same thing on the top up here. Give it a spin. Now, let's hook some wires up to this. So this one I guess we'll just use again. It was kind of a good idea. I would have done something different. I think what I would have done was soldered some wires on there or something. I can't believe. They, they may be original. I don't know. I just never seen one wound that that uh, that ugly before. All right, let me grab a piece of wire here. I think I got one already trimmed. Let me find it. Okay, so this is not the wire I was looking for, but it'll work. I'm just going to kind of do something like what they did because if this does work we will do a restoration I don't know if I can find brushes for this thing or not I'm sure I can I mean or make something work okay so this one was positive this one was negative noise alert it works you know what that means that means we're going to restore this uh, I don't want to take this apart yet because I don't know when I can get to this um, so I also might get a voltage reducer uh, to reduce that from 12 volt to 6 volt uh, for the next time we try it, I don't want to burn it up, but if you just tap it like that a little bit, it'll be fine. We'll clean this up. Um, but I really wanted to see the inside of that. But like I said, I don't want to get it all apart. Put it back together because I believe, yeah, there's a couple gaskets here we may have to make. If I remember right, there's one on the bottom here. And then you got your diaphragm that goes on and then another one on top and then this sandwiches them all together and I don't want to you know put it all back together and then take it all back apart again so because <clears throat> really all we're going to be doing is cleaning it and painting it now I'm going to try to get some of these dents out uh, I'm not sure how I want to do that I don't know if I can get that that uh, screen out of there if I can then I can get the dents out um, so yeah that's uh that's pretty cool and it's pretty loud and i'm sure they don't appreciate me in the other rooms right now <laughs> but it's okay i know it's a short video but so let me get you spun around here 
We'll chit chat for a minute like we do every week. Like I said, I won't be able to do this every week and it's not always going to be on a Friday. That's what I shoot for. It just wasn't in the cards for me this weekend. So let me get you spun around. Okay guys, so brought up some information here because I know a little bit about it but not enough to say this is for sure what years and all that. So and also if you guys have any more inf any information um, on it as well. Uh, go ahead and leave it in the comments. It would, that would be appreciated. If you would share that information. The Claxton horn is the Auga horns on the Model T and Model A Fords of the 1920s and 30s. Okay, see before that they had the bulb type. You'd squeeze it and it would go uh, 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 kind of like bicycles had but they were bigger and more neat and um that type of horn is probably one of the most memorable in automotive history. The horns were loud and effective at getting pedestrians and animals out of the way. Inventor Miller Reese Hutchison, Hutchinson was responsible for the Claxton horns released to vehicles. Since the 1930s, manufacturers have exper experimented with the sound chamber and basic basic Claxton type diaphragm to make sounds. Also, there was something I was reading on here, um, what the Claxton meant. Okay, the Claxton horn came around the 1920s. A Claxton horn, the Greek word Klaxo means to shriek. So this Claxton horn used to make the sound through an electronically powered vibrating diaphragm. And that would be this. This one works as a motor. Now, a regular car horn nowadays, they vibrate. Okay, they don't have a motor in them. So just a little tidbit there for you, I thought was uh, very interesting. Now, Model A wasn't the only one to use these horns. I mean, General Motors used them, Dodge, and... Uh, I believe Dodge. I'm not working on that, but I know General Chevy's. Chevy's used them, um, but I don't see. This is Model FM, and it's uh, E A L E A Laboratories. Uh, there is a number. No, Incorporated. I cannot find any numbers on here. I'm sure it's been, um, I'm sure it's been repainted and it looks like it's been, it's usually right in here, there's a tag on them, you know, that would tell you, you know, a, like what year, um, this one has no tag, so I'm, I'm confident it's been <laughs> repainted. I mean, it's real thick with paint and I believe this was, uh, brush painted, which was not uncommon back in them days. But this is definitely original one. You can buy these brand new now, but they're just they're just not the same. You know what I mean? They're just uh, there's just no comparison. So I mean, you just you just spin that thing a little bit, and so. Um, but yeah, I, I will uh, and stuff all over me. I will uh, see if I maybe I can slow that audio down a little bit for you and. Uh, so you can kind of hear what it sounds like uh, with a six volt. It's still very loud, just not as fast. It kind of, you know, up and down. Uh, the old sirens were the same way, like on fire trucks and stuff. They used to hand crank them. They had a guy standing back up there on top of the truck, hand cranking that siren. And uh, then they they went with a something like this effect only it had the siren inside what it is it's like a turbine type thing that's what gives that high pitched ring and that's why they would go and you see old movies and pulling up in a fire truck or police car and it take like eight hours for it to stop because that thing was still spinning in there um so yeah pretty interesting now i'll have more information on this i'm sure once we do restore it uh, well, I probably not even going to do a full restore. We're just going to clean it up, sand it off, and paint it. Uh, it's just going to be painted black, but it'll be fine. Um, 
I, I really didn't think. I mean, look at look at the windings on them wires. They may be original. Um, I you know uh, when I was looking this up a minute ago about the the history of these to give you kind of somewhat of an idea of where they're originating and stuff. Um, I was trying to find some pictures of these originals. I couldn't couldn't find one. I'm sure I will, but I didn't look real hard. But I couldn't find one, you know, within a couple minutes um, that had the cover off, so I could see if those windings were original. I thought they, and they might be because it looks like. Um, See, so they used to use cloth. Like now, you know, you got the rubberized coating, um, plastic type. You know, that's more. It's rubberized, but it's more of a plastic sheeting on the outside this is like two layers here um, for some voltage this is just just rubber on the outside of it um, these let's see if I can get you in there those are cloth and the newer windings are just copper but they got a coating on them to keep them from short now it's just um, like a red color coating that covers the copper and th this is actually uh this is a uh, cloth coated so i don't know if someone's unwound it and then rewound it that could be a possibility at one time and it's usually you know i mean like windings nowadays i don't have any uh right here but when when we take this apart and clean it you know i'll try to find one and you'll see the difference in this in these things. Um, I really didn't think this thing was going to work. I mean, we opened it up, stuff falling apart, and see like that. You know, that's starting to come apart there, right there. And if you look at that one, it's actually got a piece cracked out of it, right there above my finger. So I mean, it works great. So I am very very surprised. Okay guys, so, sorry for the short video, but, you know, it is now 12.52, okay, so, um, yeah, that was a, a pretty quick one, let's go ahead and, um, let's just put this back on here, um, we'll get a better screw than this, we'll get one that, you know, if I gotta, if I gotta weld over that hole, redrill it and retap it, we will, but we'll put, you know a better you know more suitable screw in it I don't even know <laughs> supposed to go down in there Okay, so anyway again guys I'm so sorry that I didn't get to do the live stream tonight but hell nobody asked about it anyway right so but I'm gonna try to shoot for next weekend it's had a lot of stuff come up you know my niece has helped me out a lot in the past and she is my niece so she's always gonna be my baby girl even though she's grown up and got her own kid and I'm just uh, you know um, so when my family needs help that's priority you know so I, I'm going to help them especially when they have helped me so yeah I'm going to sit here I'm going to finish my NA beer and uh, have another cigarette and then I will edit this video for you the best to my ability <laughs> and uh, drop this video for you as soon as possible so um, I think tomorrow I've got something. Uh, Monkey's got one of those um, powered toothbrushes. It's rechargeable. It's kind of cool. When you set it on the base, there's no like wires or no prongs or nothing. It just uh, kind of like just recharges somehow. But um, she went and bought a new one, and uh, today because she said it wasn't working right, I took the end off of it, and it was just it's just dirty. You know how hell she's had it. I know when we got together. It'll be four years in November, and she had it then. Um, so it's done her well. But I thought about cleaning up, seeing if we can get it to work, and using it for cleaning parts. 
small parts like carburetors, outsides of carburetors, wheel bearings, stuff like that, and parts cleaner. I figured it'd be good for that if we can get it working good enough. So anyway, we'll I, I might mess around with that that tomorrow. It'll be Sunday. Uh, she kind of wants me to rest all day tomorrow. I may do that. I don't know. But anyway, again, guys, I'm so sorry, but you know, life happens, and and the stuff you got to deal with once in a while. And and I was more than happy to help her out. So uh, Monkey helped her out too. And, just some things on the truck we put just quick we put a uh, we you know we had to pull the center head off which is the intake manifold uh, you know gear heads will call them center heads but just the intake manifold we got we had to pull it off it's not that it's not that big of a deal we had it off in less than an hour put new gaskets on it well we had to take it off because we had to put the knock sensors in and um, we put them both in so and we got that back together and then we started running into issues uh, there's that that suburban's got rear heat so up at the heater core where the heater hoses are you've got your inlet and your outlet well they both of course have a smaller one that it's called like a bypass okay it comes out out of the inlet in to the <laughs> Uh, goes back to the rear heater and then the other one comes out and back into the return and I don't know I leaned on her or something I snapped that off so we had to wait on monkey to get home so monkey got home and her, her alternator it's another store her alternator it's uh, it was a year old it'd be a year old in September September 18th as a matter of fact it'd be a year old started bearing started making noises so I listened to it with my stethoscope which I got right here very handy tool and uh, back bearing was fine front bearing was growling and blah, blah, blah. and you could just you could even spin it with your hand and hear it squeak 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 she goes to take it back well they didn't have one so they had to go to uh, clear over to uh, Shit, Crystal River, or was it Hollywood? Yeah, we do have a Hollywood, Florida, by the way. So yeah, I think they ended up having to go over to Hollywood. And so anyway, they they got one. It was get you know. Well, they argued about it. They made her pay for it. By the way, it's got a lifetime warranty, but there wasn't a manager around to overwrite this. So you know. Well, she had to receive. Well, she had the receipts in the truck. I took pictures of the receipts. She showed them to the guy, and well, they didn't have a manager to overwrite it, so she had to end up paying almost two hundred dollars for a fucking alternator that's still under warranty. And uh, so anyway, she she thought, well, I better check this. Well, they took it out of the box for her, you know, and, and um, the fucking pulley was dented. It was broke. It was damaged. Brand new. It was damaged. She's like, you better give me another one. They only have one left. Okay, so they come back. All right. We get it put on. I get the T connector put on. And just as I'm putting it on there, because they're right side by side, I barely bumped the other one. It snapped off. They're plastic. There's no reason why they can't make them aluminum. Anyway, it snapped off. So they had to go get another one. <laughs> so I can put that on. So we get it all together, start it up, what I'm leaking. Motherfucker, you know. Which wasn't no big deal. I got that fixed first thing this morning. But so I get to look and I'm you know, just something didn't look like look right on one of the plug wires. Because it's only got it's only got an uh, ten inch wire. It's got eight coil packs. It goes from the coil coil pack right eight inches below right down to the to the spark plug and it just one of them just didn't look right to me and I reached down touched it and someone had cut it off and just kind of like stuck it back to where it looked like it was on three of them on the same now I, I've seen one break off before I've seen that a hundred times heat gets to them they get brittle and they break I've seen two usually it's one on each side I've seen that a couple times I've never seen three right straight in a row. It'd be what? Um, it'd be 
three, five, and seven. Okay, cylinders. Three, five, and seven. Right in row. Three of them were broke off. Every one I touched wasn't even really attached. They were just sticking there. That pissed me off. Someone done that on purpose to her. So anyway, uh, Monkey and I bought her. You know, get a little tight on money. So, and uh, she's wanting to go go away tomorrow. She's wanting to go up to Virginia. So I don't know if she's gonna be able to do that or not. So we got the uh, plugs and wires for her, you know, because uh, I went ahead and put new spark plugs in it. It needed it. Um, so anyway, we finally got it going, and and that was pretty much it in a nutshell so but yeah leaning over that truck man right here right in my rib cage you know leaning over the engine and stuff sore as hell so anyway we got that going but so I was very tired last night so and then today I got that going the new ring doorbell came in today I installed it it's working perfectly So you know, it's kind of of a kind of been a busy weekend. So again, I'm sorry for that, but we'll get back on track. I promise you. So Shea Bear, the myth, the man, the legend. Enjoy your Sunday, and hope everyone's being safe and doing well. So again, thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it, and we'll see you soon. Thanks for hanging out. Bye, bye, guys, and take care.